Well, now this is a little out of the normal for being James Bond. As you can tell by the title, we're going to do something a little bit off the beaten path this time. A lot of people are coming to me lately asking me about podcasting or YouTube videos or how to spice up their videos with some basic graphics because everybody wants to get into the discussion. And what better way to communicate your ideas to other fans than to do a podcast and to do a, a YouTube channel and talk about the things you like and contribute your ideas. So this episode of Being James Bond is going to be dedicated to audio and podcasting as part of a three-part series. The first part is going to be, as I said, audio and podcasting, leading naturally to video and YouTube, ending off with graphics and some basic visual effects. And we're going to cap this off with me. You're going to watch me literally record a podcast, edit it, because I'm going to publish this thing tomorrow. So I got to get moving. Let's get started. Now pay attention, please. Now, I've been doing podcasts now for over 12 years. I first started in late 2006. It was right before Casino Royale came out. That was my very first podcast. And I've been going strong ever since. I love doing it. And I, again, it's one of those things that I just enjoy getting better at, learning more, because I can honestly say that over time, uh, I've definitely streamlined my process. I know how to do it quicker, better, more efficiently. Now, even though podcasting has been around for a long time, there are some that say that podcasting is poised to get even bigger and better. There's a very well-known entrepreneur named Seth Godin who says that podcasting is the new blogging. And he really feels that this format is still only in its infancy and is only going to get more powerful. Now, even though everyone is sort of clamoring to get onto YouTube and do YouTube videos, myself included, because there are a lot of great advantages to doing video, to getting your face out there, as opposed to just doing podcasts. Um, on the other hand, there are some things about podcasting that have a lot of advantages over YouTube. They all fall into the category of not having to deal with a lot of YouTube BS. My video on the music of James Bond part two, holy cow, did I get clobbered with the copyright claims and I have to go back and edit it and finesse it. And all I want to do is talk about the, the songs. I want to talk about the music. These things are supposed to be under fair use. Forget that. YouTube does not care. If someone says, I have a copyright claim, that's all it takes. Now stop right there just in case you're planning to fast forward to the section on video. If doing YouTube videos is where your head is, let me still give you a bit of advice. The audio you're listening to right now is done with my Heil PR40 microphone. The audio you're hearing now is the built-in microphone with the iPhone that I use to shoot my video. See the difference? The word you're looking for is unprofessional unpolished. Good quality audio will make or break your videos and a quality audio will give your viewers a much better experience all around and really lift it up to a level that takes it above just what your average YouTuber is willing to do. Also, a great way to expand your brand is to offer a podcast as a companion to your YouTube channel. People who listen to podcasts are usually doing so during their commute, when they're on the treadmill, when listening to their earbuds is a much better, more viable alternative to watching a video. So in many cases, you can simply export the audio from your video and use that as material for your podcast, which is exactly what I'm going to do right here. And watch how easy this is. If I go to file, share, file, where it says video and audio. I just click audio only. It'll give me a WAV file, and that is what I'm going to use for tonight's podcast. But again, when you realize how simple that is, why not do a podcast as a companion piece to your YouTube channel? Okay, so what are we actually going to cover on this presentation of audio and podcasting? Obviously, let's plan out your format. Let's talk about the equipment that you will need, what kind of software you need to download, the actual recording of your audio, then the editing process, then we'll talk about how you will actually launch a podcast, and then we will conclude with a couple last minute thoughts. Now, as we talk about formatting, this is kind of like your brainstorming session. If you're listening to this and you're giving it some thought, you probably have a pretty good idea. Well, I know I want to do a podcast and I'm pretty sure I know what I want to talk about. Okay. Now, is that topic, is that theme going to last you, say, past 10 episodes? Or are you going to be sitting there 10 episodes later going, wow, I kind of painted myself into a corner. I don't know where to go with this. 
So this is a good time to sort of think about what you want to do and how you want to present it. So here's some things you want to think about. What will the name of your podcast be? Sounds simple enough, but the name of your podcast is like a tattoo. You better really like it because a couple years down the road, you're going to be stuck with it. So think of a name that definitely explains what your podcast is, but also has a little punch, a little catchiness. What will your podcast be about? Again, simple enough, but is it too broad? Is it too narrow? Are you going to be struggling to think of topics going down the road? Is it broad enough to attract a number of people? So play around with this a little bit and think about what is or is not your podcast. What ideas and topics will fit nicely into your format? How often can your listeners expect an episode? This can get pretty tricky and be very realistic in the expectations you're going to put on yourself. When I started out, I had mega podcasts and I promised them once a week, which was totally not realistic. So again, as you think about your topics, think about the average length of your podcast and how reasonably you can get these executed and published so your listeners can expect them fairly regularly. Will you host the podcast alone or will you have a co-host? This can be a big one too. I can tell you from personal experience that going alone, doing a podcast by yourself is very demanding for multiple reasons. First of all, you will be your own worst critic. You will record, you will stop every time you flub, you will edit and re-edit, and you have to fill that space. You have to talk about your topic and fill up a lot of empty airtime. That can be a lot. It can be a struggle. On the other hand, having a host can definitely make things easier. First of all, you have two people making contributions to fill your podcast with good information. You have two styles, two personalities that play off of each other. Plus, it really streamlines your editing because, again, you're going to be hard on yourself. But when two people are talking, you will be much more forgiving and let the natural flow of the conversation shine through. Now, again, you know your topic better than I do. Maybe this is something you have to do alone. But if possible, my suggestion would be to get a co-host. Will you do interviews? Now, here's a way to have the same two man show format, yet you're still in control of your podcast. I know my topic, I know what I want to discuss, I'll handle it myself, but bringing in new people every week to talk to, bounce ideas off of, and people who will in turn ask you questions, that's another way to get fresh new information out every week and still have that good benefit of having two voices in your podcast. What topics will you cover? What's the theme of your podcast? Now again, we mentioned this briefly earlier, but here's where you really want to sort of iron out the nuts and bolts of your podcast. Again, is your topic too specific to be able to do a whole series of shows? Do you feel like you're going to run out of information at a certain time? Could you branch out in different directions? If you can see where your podcast can go, say 10, 20, 50, 100 episodes, then you're on the right track. If you can only predict about 10, 15 episodes and then you start to struggle to figure out where you're going to get the new material, plan ahead. Try to figure out what that next step will be and incorporate that early. Tell your audience what they can expect going down the road. Oh, and lastly, you're going to need a logo, some kind of artwork. Now, this one you don't exactly have to conquer in your brainstorming sessions. But just keep in mind now that when you actually go to post your podcast, when you go to launch, you will be expected to have some sort of a graphic when you submit it to places like iTunes or Stitcher. It doesn't have to be complicated, but it should be colorful and have enough punch to tell people what they can expect when they listen to your show. Now, this is something you can do yourself. Great. Otherwise, just keep a good idea of what your show is about and then find a creative friend to help you with some sort of a logo or graphic that you feel is a good representation of what your show is about. And also, before you get started, be sure to do a Google search and find out what the exact size and specifications are for a podcast graphic on iTunes. Currently, it is 1600 pixels by 1600 pixels, but you never know when iTunes might upgrade or want a higher resolution graphic. Okay, so we gave you plenty to think about when it comes to planning out your format. When you're done with that, it's time to start recording. For that, you're going to need some equipment. Okay, so as soon as you heard the word equipment, you heard cha-ching. It's time to start laying out some cash. But keep this analogy in mind when you start to buy your equipment. I think of audio equipment kind of like I think about sunglasses. When you purchase sunglasses, you have the really high-end, expensive sunglasses, hundreds of dollars. Then you have the bottom of the barrel, nickel and dime store, five, ten dollar cheapy pairs of sunglasses. But if you kind of just go a little above the bottom, 
$20, $30 will get you a pretty nice pair of sunglasses that really only an expert could differentiate from the expensive ones. That's sort of how I think about audio equipment. If you go just a little above the bottom, spend a few dollars, but don't go crazy, you will get a lot of bang for your buck. And again, you will set yourself apart from the people who just don't think about their audio. So with that in mind, let's talk about actual equipment. Okay, so let's get through this. The first piece of equipment you're gonna need is an audio recorder. We're not talking about your microphone just yet. This is the actual unit that you will use to record your audio and store your file until you're ready to edit. And with this, you have many easy options. Now you could use an expensive external audio recorder and mixer, like the Mackie 14 channel compact mixer, which came recommended by one podcasting expert. But I wouldn't even know where to begin to use this thing. And if you do, then you probably don't need this introduction to podcasting. You could also use a portable external recorder like the popular Tascam DR5 digital voice recorder or the Roland RO5 digital voice recorder, which I have actually used for many years and works just fine. I still use this option when I'm traveling, but honestly, you just don't need these high-end recorders anymore. There are two other options that make a lot more logical sense. First, you can use your laptop. Recording directly into your laptop is a perfectly reasonable option. It's fully capable of recording your audio and seeing if you're going too light or too heavy. And it also saves you the trouble of having to move your files into your editing software since you're gonna record directly into editing software like Audacity, which we will discuss. If there's any limitation to this method, it would be the reliance on your USB input. But we'll talk about possible solutions if you decide to go this route. The other easy option is to record right into your iPhone or iPad. Believe it or not, I have adopted recording directly into my iPhone using a highly capable recording app called Voice Record Pro, which we'll discuss when we get into software. I found this app when my Roland digital recorder became damaged, and now I just can't go back. Again, more on this app later, but just know that the modern smartphone, along with a solid microphone setup, has become my perfect solution to recording quality audio. Next up is your microphone. Now here's the one you've been waiting for. And yes, your choice of microphone will be the biggest deciding factor in how your voice comes across in your podcast. Now I won't dwell too much on your possibilities here as there's a ton of great websites which run down the best microphones at every price range, from the beginner level to the mid range to the more professional studio microphones. But here are five popular microphones for podcasting at every level and every budget. The Heil PR40 Dynamic Microphone. This one is regarded by many professional podcasters to be the top of the line. When I upgraded my home studio about five years ago, I bit the bullet and went pro. And I've honestly never looked back. But top of the line is not cheap. And with a price tag of $327, it's probably a little bit much for your first microphone. The Rode NT-USB Studio Quality Condenser Microphone. This is a studio quality microphone with a USB interface so it can easily be connected directly to your computer. The ultra low noise will make sure your voice stays front and center. And this mic even boasts official Apple iPad compatibility. At $169, this one might be a little easier to swallow than the Heil model. The Blue Yeti USB microphone. Another favorite among podcasters and YouTube hosts, the Blue Yeti will still let you control your microphone gain and comes equipped with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And it also comes in a range of colors if video is more your goal. This one comes in at a reasonable $120. The Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB Dynamic Microphone. Looking just a little bit more beginner budget friendly, the Audio-Technica comes in at a mere $67, but still maintains a high quality sound. This one also features great versatility as it handles both XLR and USB cables. This one gets great reviews for such an inexpensive option. And finally, the Logitech USB headset H390 with noise canceling microphone. If you're still on the fence about podcasting and really need to stay budget conscious, the Logitech USB headset H390 will make a great first microphone. 
I started podcasting with a similar headset, and it worked fine for me for many years, giving me quality audio every time with a great deal of convenience. The headset mic means that you can move around in your chair and still get consistent audio. And if you find that podcasting is just not your thing, well, you'll still have a great headset for Skype calls or gaming. At under $30, you just can't go wrong. With a good microphone and a device to actually record and store your files, you now have all you need to actually record and store audio. But here's a few more optional items that may help you take your audio recordings and your whole podcasting experience to the next level. An XLR adapter and or amplifier. Now, depending on which microphone audio recorder combination you decide on, specifically if your mic uses an XLR output, you will need the correct cables and possibly an adapter. If you're planning to record directly to your laptop, you'll most likely need an XLR to USB cable adapter, such as the Roland Black Series USB to XLR cable to plug your microphone directly into your laptop. If you prefer to record to your smartphone or tablet, you will need a boost of power. I personally use the iRig Pre microphone preamp for smartphones and tablets. The extra 48 volts of phantom power will allow any professional grade condenser microphone to work with your handheld device. It has an XLR microphone input with adjustable sensitivity so you can control your gains right from the adapter. It also has a headphone output and a 15 inch cord for increased flexibility in positioning. A mic stand or arm. Now depending on which microphone you decide on, it will probably come with a self-sustaining stand of some kind. If not, then you will need a stand of some kind to position your microphone correctly. A standard mic stand will do a perfectly good job of positioning your mic for easy access. However, for a little added flexibility, that'll also kind of spruce up your home studio a little bit. A flexible microphone arm will definitely give some added convenience and comfort and really kind of make your home studio look a lot more professional. They'll easily mount to any desk or bookshelf, and it really lets you record in comfort as you're able to bring the microphone to you as opposed to having to lean awkwardly into the microphone. This piece of equipment can also range pretty wildly in price. So look for a name that you can trust and choose accordingly and within your budget. Next would be your pop filter. A common term that you'll hear among podcasters and audiophiles is the word plosive. A plosive is the P and T sounds that occur, which can cause unwanted pops in your audio recordings. To prevent this, you can use a pop filter. Now, whether you choose to use a windscreen or a simple foam cover, a pop filter is essential to quality audio. And the last bit of equipment I want to mention is a mic flag. Now, this one sort of falls somewhere in between the just a fun little item to have and something that will give your podcasting experience a sense of professionalism, which may help to inspire you and really excel in podcasting. A mic flag with your brand's logo will run you roughly $60, and it will fit any microphone setup, whether your mic sits in a stand or is suspended by an arm. It really does lend some legitimacy to your home studio. Okay, so you've got your actual gear. Now it's time to start recording. There's still a few more things you need to get. We're gonna have to download some software. Thankfully, most if not all of this is completely free. So let's talk about where you're gonna download your software. Okay, so let's talk about software. Now I'm gonna try to get through this as fast as I can. I swear there's only three things I really wanna tell you about and then two more optional items that you can consider later. So let's go to my browser and just so you know, I will have all of these links in the description below. The first one is Voice Record Pro. As I mentioned, I use my iPhone now to record my audio and I find it to be so easy and so convenient that honestly I wouldn't go back to in any other way. The only thing I need if I'm traveling would be my microphone and the iPhone. So here's what the app looks like when you're actually using it. Very simple, you can tell just by looking at it. Uh, there are some things, some settings you can change, but for the most part, you just hit record, check, 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 yada, yada, yada. Hit stop when you're ready. Then it gives you a whole bunch of options on where to send the audio. You can upload it to Google Drive, to Dropbox, to the iCloud. You get the idea. So if you're going to record to an iPad or a tablet, this is the program I recommend. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, which is Audacity, and Audacity is the one you would use to actually edit your audio after you record it. 
Now you can also record directly into Audacity too. So let me be clear about that. Uh, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna pull up the actual program of Audacity. Now here's what it looks like when you first start out. If you're going to record directly into it, you simply press record, check, 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 yada, yada, yada. Okay? And this is what your audio will look like. It really is that simple. Check, check, check. So you can see, this is how your waveform will look. And here's how simple it is. Let's say I want to delete that gap. And I want to delete the silence at the end. Boom. That simple. Now, I'm not going to go too crazy into explaining Audacity because, again, I'm going to record later and edit right before your eyes. Not to mention there are a ton of really great YouTube videos, tutorials on how to use Audacity, so I won't go crazy here. But just know this before you actually watch me do some recording. This area up here, these are your tools. And there's only a couple. And of the six, I only honestly use four. Uh, your cursor is to click and drag across to highlight. Uh, this one here, this will actually grab your waveform. You can change the volume this way manually. Uh, you can click. You see how it gives you little, little um, corners? So you can, if you need to raise your volume up, lower your volume at certain points, you can do that. Um, there's other ways to do this, obviously, by the way, in the effects. Uh, but again, you see amplify, but we'll get to that later. Magnifying glass, obviously, click, click, you zoom in, right click will zoom you back out. If you click and drag, you can zoom in that way. And this guy, as opposed to the cursor, will grab your audio and you can move it around. Uh, it's just that simple. Now I'm going to delete this for a second because the other thing I want to mention, now of course, play, stop, record, very simple. All right, let's say I'm recording. This area here, this will control your input. So if I drag this up, your gains will be much too high, okay? It's gonna to be too loud. If I go the other way, it's probably gonna be much too soft, okay? So I'm gonna stop it there. You can see the big difference, okay? Just by this input. So the old saying is garbage in, garbage out. It's hard to fix bad audio. If it's too loud, it's hard to bring it back down and, and get it to sound right, okay? So watch your gains as you're going. Another way to check for this, by the way, I'm gonna hit record again. See how over here in this area, it sort of keeps track of how loud you're going and see how it stays in the green? If I go up, boom, now it's suddenly orange, red. When you're up in the red that solid, you're in a bad place, okay? Uh, the old adage is tickle the reds. Okay, if it's tickling the reds just slightly, you're usually in a pretty good place. Uh, but again, bring it back down to a reasonable level, and if you want a little more juice, you can add volume to it. But again, if you start out with it too hot, it's not going to be good. All right, now that's pretty much all I'm going to say for Audacity here. For the most part, it runs like a regular program, but I very much recommend if you're going to use this, check out a couple tutorials online. It's very simple, okay? Uh, and with that, we'll move on to the next one. Now, I'm going to bring my browser back up. The next one I want to show you is Levelator, okay? This is a nice little shortcut. I'm going to pull this up. In the past, when I was recording audio, I would find oftentimes that I wasn't really happy with the consistency of my volume. Uh, sometimes I'm a little too loud, sometimes a little too soft. I would back, come back and forth uh, from the microphone once in a while without even thinking about it. Um, this is a great little shortcut. If you just drag, I'm going to do this later, so I'm not going to get into it now. But when it's open, you just drag an audio file onto it. You will see it process, and then it spits out another version, and the levels are all, well, they're level, <laughs> as, as the name would indicate. So this is a nice way, a nice shortcut to uh, evening out your levels so that your volume is consistent. And that's pretty much it for Levelator, which means that's it for software with regards to the things that you really should have and you really should download to record and edit your audio. Uh, the only other thing I would mention is royalty-free music. If you're interested in adding music to your podcast, 
you want to make sure you're using royalty-free music. Now, okay, so here's a little side note, and if anyone asks me, I'll deny it. But with podcasting, you can get away with so much more than you can on a platform like YouTube. You can pretty much use whatever music you want, and no one is really going to bother you because no one's really paying attention to podcasts in that way. If you explode in popularity, you might want to consider royalty-free music. If you just go to YouTube and search YouTube royalty-free music, there are a lot of great resources, okay? Another great resource, this free music archive. Let's close that. Freemusicarchive.org has a lot of really great pieces of music. It's categorized by genre. If you go in, you can see a lot of different offerings, okay? And I think it, it breaks down even further. Okay? Let me try that. There you go. Breaks down even more. Uh, downloads very simple. Not a bad resource, okay? And the last thing I want to mention is a little website called Upwork. And it is, as you can see, a website for hiring freelance work. Now, why would you need this? Well, obviously, you could hire a freelancer for whatever you need. If you need a website done, if you need a freelance writer or copywriter, accounting, etc. There's a whole bunch of things you can hire people to do. Okay, why would you need one for podcasting? Well, what if you want to hire a voice actor to create a more professional-sounding intro? If you hear the intro to my podcast, the Being James Bond podcast, you'll hear a female voice at the beginning. I hired a voice actress from this site, Upwork. And when I posted the job, I specifically asked for an elegant, sexy, British-sounding voice because I was mimicking the introduction to the James Bond Special Edition DVDs. There was a female voice over the beginning with a very Bond girl sort of sound, and I wanted to replicate that. So I hired someone who I thought sounded similar. It was very simple. I posted the job. I gave a description of what I was looking for, and multiple voice actresses sent bids on that job and many of them went as far as to send a sample of what they could do. So again, I would not recommend going crazy and spending too much money when you're first starting out on a podcast. But you can keep this in the back of your mind when you are ready to take your podcast to the next level and you really want to add some polish. And again, it's not just the voice work. You could hire somebody to actually edit together your entire intro. You've probably heard podcasts where people have a very professional sounding introduction. They probably outsource their intro. So again, just something for the back burner, something to keep in mind as your podcast grows and begins to mature. And with that, that'll wrap up your software. You now have everything you need to get going. Okay, with that in mind, yours truly is about to record a podcast. Now again, I have to record this pretty quickly. I have to edit it tonight because it is literally going to go live tomorrow. But it's only the intro I have to record right now. So let's swing over to my recording studio, which is six inches to the left. Uh, and watch as I actually record. Uh, keep an eye on the wavelengths. I want you to see how the actual look of your waveform when it starts to come out. As I speak, you'll see how it's going to start to appear, and that'll give you a, a hint as to how you're going to edit it, to what you're going to look for as you edit the podcast. So, like I said, let's swing over into my studio and let's record an intro to my next podcast. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. My reds look pretty good. I can get a little noisy. I don't really have any notes this time because it's going to be a super quick intro. Uh, so I could just kind of run with it. Check, check. And welcome, my friends. Welcome back to Being James Bond. It is I, as always, your humble correspondent, head of section, Joseph Darlington. This is a weird one. I am uh, not only am I doing an intro for the podcast today, which is going to be David Zeritsky's and I discussion. See, I don't like that again. I'm going to start over again. And this is the problem. This is why <laughs> this is the struggle of doing a podcast. Because you keep, again, you keep second guessing yourself. You flub a little bit. You want to start it over to get it just right. Again, some people can just talk and talk and talk without. Yeah, I'm not one of those guys. So it takes me once or twice to get it. Here we go. And welcome one and all. This is Being James Bond. It is I, as always, your humble correspondent, head of section, Joseph Darlington. This is going to be a weird one.
Now I can pause because I can edit this out later. In addition to recording the intro for today's podcast, I also happen to be recording an actual podcast of another kind as we speak. I'm doing a presentation on podcasting itself. That's right. I decided to do a three-part presentation. I'm going to do a three-part series on audio, video, and graphics. As you will see when the video is released, a lot of people have come to me recently asking me about, you know, podcasting. I shouldn't even say recently because just over the years, you know, people always ask me about podcasting and video and especially graphics. So I decided to put something together so people can, you know, kind of have a one-stop resource and all of the soup to nuts about audio editing or podcasting along with shooting video along with just basic graphics to spice your video up. I'm doing a presentation on that. And as part of the presentation, I decided to literally record myself doing the podcast so you can sort of see the process and see how it's done. Okay, so I recorded my intro. I have to bring it into Audacity now to do my editing. I obviously have to bring in my introduction, my music, my theme music is going to have to come in. So I'm going to have to blend this all together. And I'm going to have to get rid of all those pauses and, and stammers and stutters you heard along the way. Uh, so let's bring the file into Audacity and watch the process of actually editing this podcast. Okay, we are now in the editing stage. For the sake of expedience, I've got all my files lined up, ready to go here on the left. I've got Audacity open and Levelator open, and we will show you how these all work. I'm gonna bring in the intro that we just recorded. Now check out how wimpy my wave lengths are. We can do better than that. I'm gonna close that and get rid of it. Now, I'm gonna pull up Levelator drag this right onto this little program. It works pretty quickly. And as it finishes, you see there's another file that showed up on my desktop, OHMSS intro output.wave. When you see the output, that means Levelator did its job. Now when I drag it in, it should look much better. Look how nice and tall and fairly unified these waveforms are. Uh, again, that's nice consistency. Because uh, again, the pet peeve of mine is volume that goes in and out. So you want to keep it consistent. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to double click to highlight the whole waveform. Now, of course, here's the little gaps that I did when I was recording, right? Now, there's a lot of great effects here that you're going to use. Um, the one that I'm looking for right now is Truncate Silence. Boy, is this my new favorite. Uh, it's going to find anything that is... 0.6 seconds of empty space or more and truncated to 0.4 seconds. Now it seems like a pretty small gap, but it's 0.6 or higher. So like a whole second of, of dead air will be truncated down to just less than half a second. I'm gonna let that run. Boom. Look how nice and tight and consistent that is. That is one continuous stream of consciousness if you didn't know any better. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring in my intro. Now this is my theme music with my voiceover that uh, any podcast listener is probably familiar with. Uh, I'm gonna double click here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna click here, move up, and I'm gonna slide this over. Now I know very well I'm gonna to have to edit this, so I'm not really doing this with precision yet, but I will. I'm gonna mute this top one for now. Click on my Magnifying glass, click and drag across the beginning. Now here's where my little stumbles and stammers are. So now I'm gonna go through this. I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna click play, but I can also just hit my space bar. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. My reds look pretty good. I can get a little noisy. I don't really have any notes this time because it's gonna be a super quick intro. Uh, so I can just kind of run with it. Check, check. And welcome, my friend. All right, I'm going to click stop. Okay, now again, I, I truncated that down. There was a lot of funny little, you know, pauses as I was talking. Uh, but the truncate silence eliminated that. So again, it's one nice continuous stream. I'm going to click and drag here to highlight this part. This is the 
nonsense I want to get rid of. Just hit the delete button. Now when I hit the space bar to play, and welcome, my boom. Very easy. Now I'm going to unmute this. I'm going to try to line this up to the beginning. Now I can see right away, I like to have some volume, especially at the beginning. It's kind of like the attention getter. Uh, so I'm going to click and drag here up until, see this little spike here? Just before that spike. And I'm going to go to Effect, Amplify. Now it knows this little 3.6. Now that's as high as it'll go without going beyond. Anything above that is going to be ridiculous. I'm not even sure if it'll let me. It might. Okay, well, Actually, no, it won't. See, the little OK is not clicked. So, but if I go down again, the OK pops back up. Okay, three. That might be a little much, but you know what? It's the, it's the, actually, let's just do, let's make it two and a half. Or 2.7 is fine. Click OK. Now, see how the volume went up? My spikes went higher and lower. That's good. Now, again, I want a good burst, but I also want consistency, so I don't want to go crazy. But I do like to be nice and loud and clear uh, for the intro. Now, if I click in here and just start playing. Your companion podcast. And welcome, my friends. Well That's actually pretty perfect. That's sort of exactly where I want that to pick in. L right when she stops talking, it's almost like I'm, I'm waiting in the wings to jump in and start in. Like, I can't wait to start. Uh, so that's good. Now, of course, I like the volume to drop off as I start speaking. I don't want this loud. If I play this now, like that background music is really loud. Okay. These tools here in the upper corner, uh, this is the one I'm looking for. Okay. This will click on the edges of the waveform and you can manually change your volume. I could have done it with the effect, but I'd rather do it here because I like the control that it gives you. So I'm actually going to click on my magnifying glass, click, click once or twice. Now go back to my, this tool. I'm going to line this up right when I start talking and I'm going to drop that volume off. You, you, you might think I would fade out, but honestly, it's better to just drop it quickly. So no one notices like right as my voice is going to cover the drop. That's when you want to do it. I will fade a little more down here so you can sort of catch the idea that, that I, that it will fade out behind me, but this initial drop is necessary. I'm going to zoom back out. I can, if I right click with that tool, it'll zoom me out. If I regular click, it'll zoom me in. So right click to back out. Let's say hit play. Canyon Podcast. And welcome, my friends. Welcome back to Being James Bond. And as I, as always, your humble correspondent, head of section, Joseph Darlington. This is a weird one. <laughs> now, the rest of this should be okay. And again, I did once I got going, and now that I've taken out all the little silences, it should more or less be okay. But I want to just check for a couple ums and stammers and stutters or whatever. Let's see how this works. Podcast. And welcome one and all. This is being James Bond. It is I, as always, your humble correspondent, head of section, Joseph Darlington. This is going to be a weird one. Pause, because I can edit this out later. I remember that. Okay, now let's, like I said, we're going to edit it out later. So just highlight it, delete. Let's see if it... Is that a little too much gap here? Let's see. Joseph Darlington, this is going to be a weird one. In addition to recording the intro for today. Okay, just to show you how anal I can actually get with this, I'm going to zoom in nice and tight. Go in and take out a nice chunk. Joseph Darlington, this is going to be a weird one. In addition to recording the intro for today. That might even be a little tight, but I'm just going to let that go. Because I'd rather go a little tight than leave a little too much air. Air is not your friend. Again, when you're doing a podcast, you want to keep it tight. You want to keep people's attention uh, glued to every word. The more you flub, the more you let a lot of dead air in there, the more they can just sort of zone out. Uh, so let's... I'm probably going to fast forward through some of this until I get to the next part because you don't need to see me edit every single little bit. But let's see what we got. Let's jump in. Let's jump in. Let's talk to Dave Zaritsky over at the Bond Experience. Let's talk about Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Okay, now, 
That's the end of the actual introduction. What I did was I kept on going to do the outro or the closeout. There it is on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom out. Go back to my cursor tool. I can go back to where I left it. Click and drag. I'm going to Command X to cut it. I'm going to click down below in this area. Command V to paste it. Now it should be sitting waiting for me at the beginning. There it is. I'm going to hit the mute button for now and just collapse this. Basically, this is the ending. So I'll be come back to that later. What I want to do for now is I'm going to drag in my bumper, which is the Money Penny bumper, which you probably know very well. Uh, when I drag it in, it pops right at the beginning. So I'll just drag this to the end of this intro and try to line it up. Now, again, I try to bring in my audio right as I stop talking because it I want it to almost sound like the the bumper the next bit of audio is kind of chomping at the bit to start talking because again I don't want any dead air uh, but I don't want it to overlap either so let's just see how this lines up talk about honor majesty's secret service see I don't like that gap I'm gonna drag it back a little more talk about honor majesty's secret service transmission begins from money I like that. Okay. Now I'm going to collapse this too because I don't really need this. Now, uh, where is it? This one, the Honor, Maj Honor Majesty's Audio Review. Now again, I'm going to drag this in. This is the audio from the video. I basically extracted the audio portion from the video we did. So, this is good to go. Normally, I would actually edit this too, believe it or not, um, because there are kind of pauses and gaps that you wouldn't mind so much as you're doing a video uh, but I kind of feel like it doesn't translate very well to audio however having just scanned over this already I know it's pretty tight so I'm not gonna bother with it um, what I am gonna also do though is bring in a little uh, music to sort of introduce it this is the Honor Magic Secret Service theme song or soundtrack Let's move this down. So now, let me uh, magnify this area here. Okay. So now here's the Miss Money Penny. I'm going to drag this to right about here. I only need a little bit of it. And I'm probably going to keep it pretty low, too. And I'm going to do this manually as opposed to hitting the, um, the amplify. Because you can use the amplify to go down, by the way, if you use negative numbers. I'm just going to pull this down. So let's see. Let's see how this plays out. Talk about Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Transmission begins from Money Penny. All right, a little too soon. I'm going to zoom in just a tiny bit. Again, I want that sort of right as she stops talking, and I can see that that's right about there, kind of right on her last syllable. Again, almost like I want there, there's a certain rhythm that I'm looking for. She speaks, and the next beat should be the music. Transmission begins from Money Penny. I do like that better. Dave Vitrinsky from the Bond Experience. All right. All right, Dave. Let's... You... Not so loud. And let's drag this over here just a little bit. Again, I just want a couple beats because I don't want too much music either. Transmission begins from Mummy Penny. That's a little too much. Transmission begins from Money Penny. David Zerinsky from the bot. All right, that's pretty good right there. It pretty much almost almost as if he, instead of the next music beat that you're anticipating, it's going to be his voice that jumps right in. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to lower this music sharply as he starts speaking. David Zeritsky from the Bond Experience. Joe Darlington from Being James Bond. We are back now. It okay. Uh, okay. So I'll let the music play just a little bit, okay, as he's speaking. Then right about here, I'll grab it, and I'm going to fade it out. So just click and drag to highlight it, the effect, fade out. And we should actually be pretty good. Back 
Now, if you remember from our last one where we took uh, the very first... Okay, the file has been edited. I exported it in a MP3 file. It is ready to now post it to Libsyn, which is the site that hosts my podcast. Uh, I'll show you real quickly how you set up a Libsyn account and then how you just enter a podcast. You upload it. I'm going to have to give it the description and the name and everything and also the artwork. You'll see how I do this right now. So now I'm over here at Libsyn. I have both my shows here, Being James Bond and Reviews Without Remorse. I use Libsyn for both of these feeds. Uh, and this, I'm going to tell you, this Libsyn is so much faster and easier than what I used to have to do. Uh, I'm going to go to Select Show for Being James Bond. And over here for Content, Add New Episode. So here's where you want. You want to be in these tabs here. Uh, the first one is media where you're going to add your file uploaded from the hard drive and there's my mp3 file so i'm going to choose to upload that it uploads pretty fast okay the upload was successful so now i can go over here to details now here is where you're going to actually title your show so now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cheat and go over to my YouTube channel, just copy and drop the same description that I used. Now I'm going to put it here in this description section. I'm also going to put it here in the subtitle section. Title. Now I have been titling my episodes. If I pull up my podcast on iTunes, you can see that I've been titling my episodes. So I'm up to episode number, this one's going to be 111. Uh, and it's going to be episode 111 dash with the name of the title. Okay. So I'm going to go back to Lisbon. Libsyn. Episode 111 dash. And again, I'm going to copy and drop. Here's the name. Boom. So this is already done. Okay. I'm going to go here to artwork. Now. There's two things here, thumbnail and widescreen image. Widescreen image is what I would use if I needed a large piece of artwork, uh, specifically if I was going to export these to YouTube. Now I can do this. Um, with my Reviews Without Remorse show, we publish our podcast as YouTube videos. So you need a large graphic that's actually going to show up on your screen um, for a YouTube video. Now, this graphic is what I had to post for my widescreen image. Okay, so I created this graphic. The small graphic would be this little guy here, which is what we're going to do here. I'm not going to post this to YouTube because I do YouTube videos separately, but I do need a thumbnail, so I will upload it. I'm going to click Upload New, choose File, and on my desktop iTunes underscore BJB underscore 1200 by yada yada. I'm going to upload that and very quickly it uploads. Scheduling, just like it sounds. Release date. I'm going to select a new release date because I don't want this to go out until the morning. So that's the 29th and I'm going to schedule this for 6 a.m. I am basically done. I'm going to hit publish. And now it's scheduled to go. So if you can handle that, you can handle publishing your podcast. Wow, are you still here? If you put up with this entire video, that means you're probably pretty serious about becoming a podcaster. So congratulations and welcome to the club. Again, this went on a lot longer than even I anticipated. Once I really started to get into all the nooks and crannies and the little details about what it takes to put a podcast together, um, yeah, it's all there. Uh, but again, don't be intimidated. Doing a podcast is a lot of fun. It's a great creative endeavor, and it really does tap into your mental, uh, your audio, obviously, and even your visual. Uh, you work with your voice, you work with your eyes, you work with your hands, as, as you see by actually working with the files. Uh, so again, it's fun. It really is a lot of fun. It's a great way to get in touch with people, 
get to know the community that you're in. And again, just a great creative release. Thanks for putting up with this entire video. I will see you next time. Till then, happy podcasting.